Babylonia, Wikipedia article audio. Babylonia was an ancient Akkadian speaking state and cultural area based in central southern Mesopotamia. A small Amorite ruled state emerged in 1894 BC, which contained the minor administrative town of Babylon. It was merely a small provincial town during the Akkadian Empire but greatly expanded during the reign of Hammurabi in the first half of the 18th century BC and became a major capital city. During the reign of Hammurabi and afterwards, Babylonia was called the country of Akkad. It was often involved in rivalry with the older state of Assyria to the north and Elam to the east in ancient Iran. Babylonia briefly became the major power in the region after Hammurabi created a short-lived empire, succeeding the earlier Akkadian Empire, Third Dynasty of Ur, and Old Assyrian Empire. The Babylonian Empire, however, rapidly fell apart after the death of Hammurabi and reverted back to a small kingdom. Periods Pre-Babylonian Sumero-Akkadian period Like Assyria, Babylonian state retained the written Akkadian language for official use, despite its northwest Semitic-speaking Amorite founders and Kassite successors, who spoke a language isolate, not being native Mesopotamians. It retained the Sumerian language for religious use, but already by the time Babylon was founded, this was no longer a spoken language, having been wholly subsumed by Akkadian. The earlier Akkadian and Sumerian traditions played a major role in Babylonian and Assyrian culture, and the region would remain an important cultural center, even under its protracted periods of outside rule. The earliest mention of the city of Babylon can be found in a clay tablet from the reign of Sargon of Akkad dating back to the 23rd century BC. Babylon was merely a religious and cultural center at this point and neither an independent state nor a large city, like the rest of Mesopotamia, it was subject to the Akkadian Empire which united all the Akkadian and Sumerian speakers under one rule. After the collapse of the Akkadian Empire, the South Mesopotamian region was dominated by the Gushan people for a few decades before the rise of the Third Dynasty of Ur, which restored order to the region and which, apart from northern Assyria, encompassed the whole of Mesopotamia, including the town of Babylon. Mesopotamia had already enjoyed a long history prior to the emergence of Babylon, with Sumerian civilization emerging in the region c. 3500 BC, and the Akkadian-speaking people appearing by the 30th century BC. During the 3rd millennium BC, an intimate cultural symbiosis occurred between Sumerian and Akkadian speakers, which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian on Akkadian and vice versa is evident in all areas, from lexical borrowing on a massive scale, to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the third millennium as a sprach bund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as the spoken language of Mesopotamia somewhere around the turn of the third and the second millennium BC but Sumerian continued to be used as a sacred, ceremonial, literary, and scientific language in Mesopotamia as late as the 1st century AD. First Babylonian Dynasty A Euro Amorite Dynasty, 1894 A Euro 1595 BC From c. 3500 BC until the rise of the Akkadian Empire in the 24th century BC, Mesopotamia had been dominated by largely Sumerian cities and city-states, such as Ur, Lagash, Uruk, Kish, Isin, Lursa, Adab, Eridu, Gajar, Asur, Hamazi, Akshak, Arbila and Umma, 
although Semitic Akkadian names began to appear on the king lists of some of these states between the 29th and 25th centuries BC. Traditionally, the major religious center of all Mesopotamia was the city of Nippur where the god Enlil was supreme, and it would remain so until replaced by Babylon during the reign of Hammurabi in the mid-18th century BC. The Akkadian Empire saw the Akkadian Semites and Sumerians of Mesopotamia unite under one rule, and the Akkadians fully attain ascendancy over the Sumerians and indeed come to dominate much of the ancient Near East. Empire of Hammurabi The empire eventually disintegrated due to economic decline, climate change, and civil war followed by attacks by the Gushans from the Zagros Mountains. Sumer rose up again with the Third Dynasty of Ur in the late 22nd century BC, and ejected the Gushans from southern Mesopotamia. They also seem to have gained ascendancy over much of the territory of the Akkadian kings of Assyria in northern Mesopotamia for a time. Following the collapse of the Sumerian Ur III dynasty at the hands of the Elamites in 2002 BC, the Amorites, a foreign northwest Semitic-speaking people, began to migrate into southern Mesopotamia from the northern Levant, gradually gaining control over most of southern Mesopotamia, where they formed a series of small kingdoms, while the Assyrians reasserted their independence in the north. The states of the south were unable to stem the Amorite advance, and for a time may have relied on their fellow Akkadians in Assyria for protection. King Ilishuma of the old Assyrian Empire in a known inscription describes his exploits to the south as follows, The freedom of the Akkadians and their children I established. I purified their copper. I established their freedom from the border of the marshes and Ur and Nippur, Awal, and Kish, Dur of the goddess Ishtar, as far as the city of. Past scholars originally extrapolated from this text that it means he defeated the invading Amorites to the south and Elamites to the east, but there is no explicit record of that and some scholars believe the Assyrian kings were merely giving preferential trade agreements to the south. Decline. These policies were continued by his successors Irishamai and Akunam. The Sack of Babylon and Ancient Near East Chronology. However, when Sargani succeeded as king in Assyria in 1920 BC, he eventually withdrew Assyria from the region, preferring to concentrate on continuing the vigorous expansion of Assyrian colonies in Anatolia and the Levant and eventually southern Mesopotamia fell to the Amorites, a northwest Semitic-speaking people from the northern Levant. During the first centuries of what is called the Amorite period, the most powerful city-states in the south were Isin, Eshnunna and Lursa, together with Assyria in the north. Kassite Dynasty, 1595 Euro 1155 BC one of these Amorite dynasties founded a small kingdom of Kazala which included the then still minor town of Babylon circa 1894 BC, which would ultimately take over the others and form the short-lived First Babylonian Empire, also called the First Babylonian Dynasty. An Amorite chieftain named Sumuabum appropriated a tract of land which included the then relatively small city of Babylon from the neighboring Amorite-ruled Mesopotamian city-state of Kazalu, of which it had initially been a territory, turning his newly acquired lands into a state in its own right. His reign was concerned with establishing statehood amongst a sea of other minor city-states and kingdoms in the region. However Sumuabum appears never to have bothered to give himself the title of King of Babylon, suggesting that Babylon itself was still only a minor town or city, and not worthy of kingship. Early Iron Age A Euro Native Rule, 2nd Dynasty of Isin, 1155 A Euro 1026 BC 
he was followed by Sumulael, Sabium, Apilsin, each of whom ruled in the same vague manner as Sumuabum, with no reference to kingship of Babylon itself being made in any written records of the time. Sinmubalit was the first of these Amorite rulers to be regarded officially as a king of Babylon, and then on only one single clay tablet. Under these kings, the nation in which Babylon lay remained a small nation which controlled very little territory, and was overshadowed by neighboring kingdoms that were both older, larger, and more powerful, such as, Isin, Lursa, Assyria to the north and Elam to the east in ancient Iran. The Elamites occupied huge swathes of southern Mesopotamia, and the early Amorite rulers were largely held in vassalage to Elam. Babylon remained a minor town in a small state until the reign of its sixth Amorite ruler, Hammurabi. He conducted major building work in Babylon, expanding it from a small town into a great city worthy of kingship. He was a very efficient ruler, establishing a bureaucracy with taxation and centralized government. Hammurabi freed Babylon from Elamite dominance and indeed drove them from southern Mesopotamia entirely. He then gradually expanded Babylonian dominance over the whole of southern Mesopotamia, conquering the cities and states of the region, such as Isin, Lursa, Eshnunna, Kish, Lagash, Nippur, Borsippa, Dur, Uruk, Umma, Adab, Sippar, Rapakam, and Eridu. The conquests of Hammurabi gave the region stability after turbulent times and coalesced the patchwork of small states of southern and central Mesopotamia into one single nation, and it is only from the time of Hammurabi that southern Mesopotamia came to be known historically as Babylonia. The armies of Babylonia under Hammurabi were well disciplined. He turned eastwards and invaded what was a thousand years later to become Iran, conquering Elam, Gushans, Lullaby, and Kassites. To the west, the Amorite states of the Levant including the powerful kingdoms of Mari and Yamhud were conquered. Hammurabi then entered into a protracted war with the old Assyrian Empire for control of Mesopotamia and dominance of the Near East. Assyria had extended control over much of the Hurrian and Hattian parts of southeast Anatolia from the 21st century BC, and from the latter part of the 20th century BC had asserted itself over the northeast Levant and central Mesopotamia also. After a protracted unresolved struggle over decades with the powerful Assyrian kings Shamshiadadai and Ishmdagan, Hammurabi forced their successor Mutashkar to pay tribute to Babylon c. 1751 BC, thus giving Babylonia control over Assyria's centuries-old Hattian and Hurrian colonies in Anatolia. One of the most important works of the first Babylonian dynasty, as it was called by the native historians, was the compilation of Babylonian law a law code both influenced by and improved upon the much earlier codes of Sumer, Akkad, and Assyria. This was made by order of Hammurabi after the expulsion of the Elamites and the settlement of his kingdom. In 1901, a copy of the Code of Hammurabi was discovered on a steel by Jacques de Morgan and Jean Vincent Skyle at Susa in Elam, where it had later been taken as plunder. That copy is now in the Louvre. Period of Chaos, 1026 A Euro 911 BC From before 3000 BC until the reign of Hammurabi, the major cultural and religious center of southern Mesopotamia had been the ancient city of Nippur, where the god Enlil was supreme. However, with the rise of Hammurabi, this honor was transferred to Babylon, and the South Mesopotamian god Marduk rose to supremacy in the pantheon of southern Mesopotamia. 
the city of Babylon became known as a holy city where any legitimate ruler of southern Mesopotamia had to be crowned. Hammurabi turned what had previously been a minor administrative town into a powerful and influential major city, increasing its size and population dramatically, extended its rule over the entirety of southern Mesopotamia, and conducting a number of impressive architectural works. Assyrian Rule, 911 A Euro 619 BC The Amorite ruled Babylonians like their predecessor states, engaged in regular trade with the Amorite and Canaanite city-states to the west, with Babylonian officials or troops sometimes passing to the Levant and Canaan, with Amorite merchants operating freely throughout Mesopotamia. The Babylonian monarchy's western connections remained strong for quite some time. An Amorite chieftain named Abi Ramu or Abram was the father of a witness to a deed dated to the reign of Hammurabi's grandfather, Amididana, great grandson of Hammurabi, still titled himself king of the land of the Amorites. Amididana's father and son also bore Amorite names, Abi Eshu and Ami Sajika. Ultra Short Chronology 1499 BC, Short Chronology, 1531 BC, Middle Chronology, 1595 BC, Long Chronology, 1651 BC, Ultra Long Chronology, 1736 BC. Southern Mesopotamia had no natural, defensible boundaries, making it vulnerable to attack. After the death of Hammurabi, his empire began to disintegrate rapidly. Under his successor Samsuiluna the far south of Mesopotamia was lost to a native Akkadian-speaking king called Ilamaili who ejected the Amorite-ruled Babylonians. The south became the native Sealand dynasty remaining free of Babylon for the next 272 years. Both the Babylonians and their Amorite rulers were driven from Assyria to the north by an Assyrian-Akkadian governor named Pusersin C. 1740 BC, who regarded King Mutashkar as both a foreign Amorite and a former lackey of Babylon. After six years of civil war in Assyria, a native king named Adesai seized power c. 1735 BC, and went on to appropriate former Babylonian and Amorite territory in central Mesopotamia, as did his successor Belbani. Amorite rule survived in a much reduced Babylon, Samshuiluna's successor Abi Eshu made a vain attempt to recapture the Sealand dynasty for Babylon but met defeat at the hands of King Damkailisha II. By the end of his reign Babylonia had shrunk to the small and relatively weak nation it had been upon its foundation, although the city itself was far larger than the small town it had been prior to the rise of Hammurabi. Neo-Babylonian Empire Persian Babylonia Culture Babylonian Culture he was followed by Amididana and then Ami Sajika, both of whom were in too weak a position to make any attempt to regain the many territories lost after the death of Hammurabi, contenting themselves with peaceful building projects in Babylon itself. Samsudidana was to be the last Amorite ruler of Babylon. Early in his reign he came under pressure from the Kassites, a people speaking an apparent language isolate originating in the mountains of what is today northwest Iran. Babylon was then attacked by the Indo-European-speaking, Anatolia-based Hittites in 1595 BC. Shamshuddinna was overthrown following the sack of Babylon by the Hittite king Mersilii. The Hittites did not remain for long but the destruction wrought by them finally enabled their Kassite allies to gain control. 
The date of the sack of Babylon by the Hittites under King Mersili I is considered crucial to the various calculations of the early chronology of the ancient Near East, as it is taken as a fixed point in the discussion. Suggestions for its precise date vary by as much as 230 years, corresponding to the uncertainty regarding the length of the Dark Age of the ensuing Late Bronze Age collapse resulting in the shift of the entire Bronze Age chronology of Mesopotamia with regard to the Egyptian chronology. Possible dates for the sack of Babylon are The Kassite dynasty was founded by Gondash of Mari. The Kassites, like the Amorite rulers who had preceded them, were not originally native to Mesopotamia. Rather, they had first appeared in the Zagros Mountains of what is today northwestern Iran. The ethnic affiliation of the Kassites is unclear. However, their language was not Semitic nor Indo-European, and is thought to have been either a language isolate or possibly related to the hurro urartian language family of Anatolia although the evidence for its genetic affiliation is meager due to the scarcity of extant texts. However, several Kassite leaders may have borne Indo-European names, and they may have had an Indo-European elite similar to the Mitanni elite that later ruled over the Hurrians of central and eastern Anatolia. The Kassites renamed Babylon Karjunya and their rule lasted for 576 years the longest dynasty in Babylonian history. This new foreign dominion offers a striking analogy to the roughly contemporary rule of the Hyksos in ancient Egypt. Most divine attributes ascribed to the Amorite kings of Babylonia disappeared at this time, the title god was never given to a Kassite sovereign. However, Babylon continued to be the capital of the kingdom and one of the holy cities of Western Asia, where the priests of the ancient Mesopotamian religion were all powerful, and the only place where the right to inheritance of the short-lived old Babylonian Empire could be conferred. Art and Architecture Babylonia experienced short periods of relative power, but in general proved to be relatively weak under the long rule of the Kassites, and spent long periods under Assyrian and Elamite domination and interference. It is not clear precisely when Kassite rule of Babylon began, but the Indo-European Hittites from Anatolia did not remain in Babylonia for long after the sacking of the city, and it is likely the Kassites moved in soon afterwards. Agum II took the throne for the Kassites in 1595 BC, and ruled a state that extended from Iran to the Middle Euphrates. The new king retained peaceful relations with Irishim III, the native Mesopotamian king of Assyria, but successfully went to war with the Hittite Empire, and 24 years after, the Hittites took the sacred statue of Marduk he recovered it and declared the god equal to the Kassite deity Shukamuna. Bernabari Ashai succeeded him and drew up a peace treaty with the Assyrian king Puzarashur III, and had a largely uneventful reign, as did his successor Kashtili Ash III. Astronomy Medicine Literature the Sealand dynasty of southern Mesopotamia remained independent of Babylonia and in native Akkadian-speaking hands. However, Dolomboreish managed to attack it conquered parts of the land from E.A. Gamal, a king with a distinctly Sumerian name, around 1450 BC, whereupon E.A. Gamal fled to his allies in Elam. The Sealand dynasty region still remained independent however, and the Kassite king seems to have been unable to finally conquer it. Dolomboreish began making treaties with ancient Egypt, which then was ruling southern Canaan, and Assyria to the north. Karandash built a bas-relief temple in Uruk and Kurigalzu I built a new capital Dirk Kurigalzu named after himself transferring administrative rule from Babylon. 
Both of these kings continued to struggle unsuccessfully against the Sealand dynasty. Agum III also campaigned against the Sealand dynasty, finally wholly conquering the far south of Mesopotamia for Babylon, destroying its capital Durin Lil in the process. From there Agum III extended farther south still, invading what was many centuries later to be called the Arabian Peninsula, and conquering the pre-Arab state of Dilmun. Karandash strengthened diplomatic ties with the Assyrian king Ashur bel Nishashu and the Egyptian pharaoh Thutmose III and protected Babylonian borders with Elam. Kadaman Ar by succeeded Karandash, and briefly invaded Elam before being eventually defeated and ejected by its king Teptihar. He then had to contend with the Sudians ancient Semitic-speaking peoples from the southeastern Levant who invaded Babylonia and sacked Uruk. He describes having annihilated their extensive forces, then constructed fortresses in a mountain region called Aiai, in the desert to the west as security outposts, and he dug wells and settled people on fertile lands, to strengthen the guard. Kurigalzu I succeeded the throne and soon came into conflict with Elam, to the east. When Aur Badala, the successor of Teptihar took the throne of Elam, he began raiding the Babylonia, taunting Kurigalzu to do battle with him at Darilji. Kurigalzu launched a campaign which resulted in the abject defeat and capture of Aur Badala, who appears in no other inscriptions. He went on to conquer the eastern lands of Elam. This took his army to the Elamite capital, the city of Susa, which was sacked. After this a puppet ruler was placed on the Elamite throne, subject to Babylonia. Kurigalzu I maintained friendly relations with Assyria, Egypt and the Hittites throughout his reign. Kadishman and Lil I succeeded him and continued his diplomatic policies. Neo-Babylonian Culture Benabariash II ascended to the throne in 1359 BC, he retained friendly relations with Egypt, but the resurgent Middle Assyrian Empire to the north was now encroaching into northern Babylonia, and as a symbol of peace, the Babylonian king took the daughter of the powerful Assyrian king Ashur Ubalidai in marriage. He also maintained friendly relations with Subbaluliyama I, ruler of the Hittite Empire. He was succeeded by Kara Arda in 1333 BC, however, a usurper named Nazi Bugad opposed him, enraging Ashur Ubalidai, who invaded and sacked Babylon slew Nazi Bugat, a next Babylonian territory for the Middle Assyrian Empire, and installed Kurigalzu II as his vassal ruler of Babylonia. Soon after Eric Deni Li succeeded the throne of Assyria in 1327 BC, Kurigalzu III attacked Assyria in an attempt to reassert Babylonian power. After some impressive initial successes he was ultimately defeated, and lost yet more territory to Assyria. Between 1307 BC and 1232 BC his successors, such as Nazi Maradash, Kadishman Turgu, Kadishman and Lil II, Kujaran Lil and Shagarakti Shuriash, allied with the empires of the Hittites and the Mitanni. In a failed attempt to stop Assyrian expansion, which nevertheless continued unchecked. Kashtiliash IV's reign ended catastrophically as the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I rooted his armies, sacked and burned Babylon and set himself up as king, ironically becoming the first native Mesopotamian to rule the state, its previous rulers having all been non Mesopotamian Amorites and Kassites. Kashtiliash himself was taken to Ashur as a prisoner of war. An Assyrian governor slash king named Enlilnadan Shumi was placed on the throne to rule as viceroy to Tukulti Ninurta I, 
and Kadishman Harb II and Adat Shuma Idina succeeded as Assyrian governor slash kings, subject to Tukulti Ninurta I until 1216 BC. Babylon did not begin to recover until late in the reign of Adat Shuma Uzur, as he too remained a vassal of Assyria until 1193 BC. However, he was able to prevent the Assyrian king in Lil Kujari Uzur from retaking Babylonia, which, apart from its northern reaches, had mostly shrugged off Assyrian domination during a short period of civil war in the Assyrian Empire, in the years after the death of Tukulti Ninurta. Meli Shipak II seems to have had a peaceful reign. Despite not being able to regain northern Babylonia from Assyria, no further territory was lost, Elam did not threaten, and the Late Bronze Age collapse now affecting the Levant, Canaan, Egypt, the Caucasus, Anatolia, Mediterranean, North Africa, Northern Iran, and Balkans seemed to have little impact on Babylonia. War resumed under subsequent kings such as Mardukapla Idina I and Zababashuma Idin. The long-reigning Assyrian king Ashurdani resumed expansionist policies and conquered further parts of northern Babylonia from both kings, and the Elamite ruler Shatruk Nakunt eventually conquered most of eastern Babylonia. In Lilnadanea was finally overthrown and the Kassite dynasty ended after Ashurdani conquered yet more of northern and central Babylonia and the equally powerful Shatruk Nahunt pushed deep into the heart of Babylonia itself, sacking the city and slaying the king. Poetical works have been found lamenting this disaster. Despite the loss of territory, general military weakness, and evident reduction in literacy and culture, the Kassite dynasty was the longest-lived dynasty of Babylon lasting until 1155 BC, when Babylon was conquered by Shatruk Nakunt of Elam, and reconquered a few years later by the Nebuchadnezzar I, part of the larger Late Bronze Age collapse. The Elamites did not remain in control of Babylonia long, instead entering into an ultimately unsuccessful war with Assyria, allowing Marduk Kabatehashu to establish the dynasty IV of Babylon, from Isin, with the very first native Akkadian-speaking South Mesopotamian dynasty to rule Babylonia, with Marduk Kabatehashu becoming only the second native Mesopotamian to sit on the throne of Babylon, after the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I. His dynasty was to remain in power for some 125 years. The new king successfully drove out the Elamites and prevented any possible Kassite revival. Later in his reign he went to war with Assyria, and had some initial success, briefly capturing the south Assyrian city of Akulatum before ultimately suffering defeat at the hands of Ashur Danai. Astronomy 2 Mathematics Idi Marduk Balata succeeded his father in 1138 BC, and successfully repelled Elamite attacks on Babylonia during his eight year reign. He too made attempts to attack Assyria, but also met with failure at the hands of the still reigning Ashur Danai. Ninurtanadan Shami took the throne in 1137 BC and also attempted an invasion of Assyria, his armies seem to have skirted through eastern Aramea and then made an attempt to attack the Assyrian city of Arbila from the west. However this bold move met with defeat at the hands of Ashur Reshishi I who then forced a treaty in his favor upon the Babylonian king. Philosophy Nebuchadnezzar I was the most famous ruler of this dynasty. He fought and defeated the Elamites and drove them from Babylonian territory, invading Elam itself, sacking the Elamite capital Susa, and recovering the sacred statue of Marduk that had been carried off from Babylon during the fall of the Kassites. Shortly afterwards, 
the king of Elam was assassinated and his kingdom disintegrated into civil war. However, Nebuchadnezzar failed to extend Babylonian territory further, being defeated a number of times by Ashur Reshishi, king of the Middle Assyrian Empire, for control of formerly Hittite controlled territories in Aram and Anatolia. The Hittite Empire of the northern and western Levant and eastern Anatolia had been largely annexed by the Middle Assyrian Empire and its heartland finally overrun by invading Phrygians from the Balkans. In the later years of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar I devoted himself to peaceful building projects and securing Babylonia's borders against the Assyrians, Elamites, and Arameans. Legacy Notes Bibliography Nebuchadnezzar was succeeded by his two sons, Firstly in Lilnadanapli, who lost territory to Assyria. The second of them, Marduk Nadanair also went to war with Assyria. Some initial success in these conflicts gave way to a catastrophic defeat at the hands of the powerful Assyrian king Tiglath Pileser I, who annexed huge swathes of Babylonian territory, thus further expanding the Assyrian Empire. Following this a terrible famine gripped Babylon, inviting attacks and migrations from the northwest Semitic Aramaeans and Sudians from the Levant. In 1072 BC Marduk Shapixeri signed a peace treaty with Ashur Belkala of Assyria, however his successor Kadam Anbaria was not so friendly to Assyria, prompting the Assyrian king to invade Babylonia and depose him placing Adatapla Idina on the throne as his vassal. Assyrian domination continued until c. 1050 BC, with Marduk Ahariba and Marduk Zarex regarded as vassals of Assyria. After 1050 BC the Middle Assyrian Empire descended into a period of civil war, followed by constant warfare with the Arameans, Phrygians, Neo-Hittite states, and Hurrians allowing Babylonia to once more largely free itself from the Assyrian yoke for a few decades. However East Semitic-speaking Babylonia soon began to suffer further repeated incursions from West Semitic nomadic peoples migrating from the Levant during the Bronze Age collapse, and during the 11th century BC large swathes of the Babylonian countryside was appropriated and occupied by these newly arrived Arameans and Sudians. Arameans settled much of the countryside in eastern and central Babylonia and the Sudians in the western deserts, with the weak Babylonian kings being unable to stem these migrations. The ruling Babylonian dynasty of Nabushumlibur was deposed by marauding Arameans in 1026 BC, and the heart of Babylonia, including the capital city itself descended into anarchic state, and no king was to rule Babylon for over 20 years. However, in southern Mesopotamia, Dynasty V arose, this was ruled by Simbar Shipuk leader of a Kassite clan, and was in effect a separate state from Babylon. The state of anarchy allowed the Assyrian ruler Ashurnarari for the opportunity to attack Babylonia in 1018 BC, and he invaded and captured the Babylonian city of Atlila and some northern regions for Assyria. The South Mesopotamian dynasty was replaced by another Kassite dynasty which also seems to have regained control over Babylon itself. The Elamites deposed this brief Kassite revival, with King Marbidia Plyuzer founding Dynasty VII. However, this dynasty too fell, when the Arameans once more ravaged Babylon. Babylonian rule was restored by Nabamukhanapli in 977 BC, ushering in Dynasty VIII. Dynasty IX begins with Ninurtakujari Yuzhur II, who ruled from 941 BC. Babylonia remained weak during this period, with whole areas of Babylonia now under firm Aramean and Sudian control. 
Babylonian rulers were often forced to bow to pressure from Assyria and Elam, both of which had appropriated Babylonian territory. Babylonia remained in a state of chaos as the 10th century BC drew to a close. A further migration of nomads from the Levant occurred in the early 9th century BC with the arrival of the Chaldeans, another nomadic northwest Semitic people described in Assyrian annals as the Kaldu. The Chaldeans settled in the far southeast of Babylonia, joining the already long extant Aramenes and Sudians. By 850 BC the migrant Chaldeans had established their own land in the extreme southeast of Mesopotamia. From 911 BC with the founding of the Neo-Assyrian Empire by Adadnirari II, Babylon found itself once again under the domination and rule of its fellow Mesopotamian state for the next three centuries. Adadnirari II twice attacked and defeated Shamash Mutamik of Babylonia, annexing a large area of land north of the Diala River and the towns of Hati and Zanquin mid Mesopotamia. He made further gains over Babylonia under Nabushuma Yukin I later in his reign. Tukulti Niner II and Ashurne Zirpal II also forced Babylonia into vassalage and Shulmanizer III sacked Babylon itself, slow King Nabuapla subjugated the Aramean, Sudian, and Chaldean tribes settled within Babylonia, and installed Marduk Zakir Shumi I followed by Marduk Balasuik by as his vassals. It was during the late 850s BC, in the annals of Shulmanizer III, that the Chaldeans and Arabs are first mentioned in the pages of written recorded history. Upon the death of Shulmanezer II, Baba Ahaidina was reduced to vassalage by the Assyrian queen Shamuramut, acting as regent to his successor Adadnirari III who was merely a boy. Adadnirari III eventually killed Baba Ahaidina and ruled there directly until 800 BC until Ninurta Apla X was crowned. However he too was subjugated by Adadnirari II. The next Assyrian king, Shamshi Adad V then made a vassal of Marduk Belzeri. Babylonia briefly fell to another foreign ruler when Marduk Apliuzur ascended the throne in 780 BC, taking advantage of a period of civil war in Assyria. He was a member of the Chaldean tribe who had a century or so earlier settled in a small region in the far southeastern corner of Mesopotamia, bordering the Persian Gulf and southwestern Elam. Shamshiadad V attacked him and retook northern Babylonia, forcing a border treaty in Assyria's favor upon him. However he was allowed to remain on the throne and successfully stabilized the part of Babylonia he controlled. Arab Marduk, another Chaldean, succeeded him in 769 BC and his son, Nabushuma Ishkan in 761 BC. Babylonia appears to have been in a state of chaos during this time, with the north occupied by Assyria, its throne occupied by foreign Chaldeans, and civil unrest prominent throughout the land. The Babylonian king Nabonassar overthrew the Chaldean usurpers in 748 BC, and successfully stabilized Babylonia, remaining untroubled by Ashurnarari v of Assyria. However, with the accession of Tiglath Pileser III Babylonia came under renewed attack. Babylon was invaded and sacked and Nabonassar reduced to vassalage. His successors Nabunadanzeri, Nabusuma Yukin II and Nabumukanzeri were also in servitude to Tiglath Pileser III, until in 729 BC the Assyrian king decided to rule Babylon directly as its king instead of allowing Babylonian kings to remain as vassals of Assyria as his predecessors had done for 200 years. It was during this period that Eastern Aramaic was introduced by the Assyrians as the lingua franca of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, 
and Mesopotamian Aramaic began to supplant Akkadian as the spoken language of the general populace of both Assyria and Babylonia. The Assyrian king Shulmanezer V was declared king of Babylon in 727 BC, but died whilst besieging Samaria in 722 BC. Revolt was then fomented against Assyrian domination by Mardukapla Idina II, a Chaldean Malka of the far southeast of Mesopotamia, with strong Elamite support. Muradach Baladon managed to take the throne of Babylon itself between 721 A Euro 710 BC whilst the Assyrian king Sargon II were otherwise occupied in defeating the Scythians and Sumerians who had attacked Assyria's Persian and Median vassal colonies in ancient Iran. Mardukapla Idina II was eventually defeated and ejected by Sargon II of Assyria, and fled to his protectors in Elam. Sargon II was then declared king in Babylon. Sennacherib succeeded Sargon II, and after ruling directly for a while, he placed his son Ashurnadan Shemi on the throne. However Muradach Baladon and his Elamite protectors continued to unsuccessfully agitate against Assyrian rule. Nergalushazab, an Elamite, murdered the Assyrian prince and briefly took the throne. This led to the infuriated Assyrian king Sennacherib invading and subjugating Elam and sacking Babylon, laying waste to and largely destroying the city. Babylon was regarded as a sacred city by all Mesopotamians, including Assyrians, and this act eventually led Sennacherib to be murdered by his own sons while praying to the god Nisroch in Nineveh in 681 BC. A puppet king Marduk Zakir Shemi II was placed on the throne by the new Assyrian king Esar Haddon. However, Muradach Baladon returned from exile in Elam, and briefly deposed him, forcing Esar Haddon to attack and defeat him, whereupon he once more fled to his masters in Elam, where he died in exile. Esar Haddon ruled Babylon personally, he completely rebuilt the city bringing rejuvenation and peace to the region. Upon his death, and in an effort to maintain harmony within his vast empire, he installed his eldest son Shamash Shamyukin as a subject king in Babylon, and his youngest, the highly educated Ashurbanipal, in the more senior position as king of Assyria and overlord of Shamash Shamyukin. Despite being an Assyrian himself, Shamash Shamyukin, after decades subject to his brother Ashurbanipal, declared that the city of Babylon should be the seat of the immense empire. He raised a major revolt against his brother, Ashurbanipal. He led a powerful coalition of peoples also resentful of Assyrian subjugation and rule, including, Elam, the Persians, Medes, the Babylonians, Chaldeans, and Sudians of southern Mesopotamia, the Arameans of the Levant and southwest Mesopotamia, the Arabs, and Dilmunites of the Arabian Peninsula and the Canaanites Phoenicians. After a bitter struggle Babylon was sacked and its allies vanquished, Shamash Shamukim being killed in the process. Elam was destroyed once and for all and the Babylonians, Persians, Chaldeans, Arabs, Medes, Elamites, Arameans, Sudians, and Canaanites were violently subjugated, with Assyrian troops exacting savage revenge on the rebelling peoples. An Assyrian governor named Kandalanu was placed on the throne to rule on behalf of the Assyrian king. Upon Ashurbanipal's death in 627 BC, his son Ashuretilani became ruler of Babylon and Assyria. However, Assyria soon descended into a series of brutal internal civil wars which were to cause its downfall. Ashuretilani was deposed by one of his own generals, named Sint Shemulashir in 623 BC, who also set himself up as king in Babylon. After only one year on the throne amidst continual civil war, 
Sinchurishkin ousted him as ruler of Assyria and Babylonia in 622 BC. However, he too was beset by constant unremitting civil war in the Assyrian heartland. Babylonia took advantage of this and rebelled under Nabopolassar, a previously unknown Malka of the Chaldeans, who had settled in southeastern Mesopotamia by c. 850 BC. It was during the reign of Sinsharishkin that Assyria's vast empire began to unravel, and many of its former subject peoples ceased to pay tribute, most significantly for the Assyrians, the Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes, Persians, Scythians, Aramaeans, and Sumerians. In 620 BC Nabopolassar seized control over much of Babylonia with the support of most of the inhabitants, with only the city of Nippur and some northern regions showing any loyalty to the beleaguered Assyrian king. Nabopolassar was unable to yet utterly secure Babylonia, and for the next four years he was forced to contend with an occupying Assyrian army encamped in Babylonia trying to unseat him. However, the Assyrian king, Sinsharishkin was plagued by constant revolts among his people in Nineveh, and was thus prevented from ejecting Nabopolassar. The stalemate ended in 615 BC, when Nabopolassar entered the Babylonians and Chaldeans into alliance with Syaxares, an erstwhile vassal of Assyria, and king of the Iranian peoples, the Medes, Persians, Sagartians, and Parthians. Syaxares had also taken advantage of the Assyrian destruction of the formerly regionally dominant pre-Iranian Elamite and Manian nations and the subsequent anarchy in Assyria to free the Iranic peoples from three centuries of the Assyrian yoke and regional Elamite domination. The Scythians from north of the Caucasus, and the Sumerians from the Black Sea who had both also been subjugated by Assyria, joined the alliance as did regional Aramean tribes. In 615 BC, while the Assyrian king was fully occupied fighting rebels in both Babylonia and Assyria itself, Syaxares launched a surprise attack on the Assyrian heartlands, sacking the cities of Kalhu and Arabkha. Nabopolassar was still pinned down in southern Mesopotamia and thus not involved in this breakthrough. From this point on the coalition of Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes, Persians, Scythians, Sumerians, and Sagartians fought in unison against a civil war ravaged Assyria. Major Assyrian cities such as Ashur, Arbila, Guzana, Dersharakan, Imgurin Lil, Nabardi Ashur, Gajar, Kanesh, Kar Ashur Nazapal and Tushhan fell to the alliance during 614 BC. Sinsharishkin somehow managed to rally against the odds during 613 BC, and drove back the combined forces ranged against him. However, the alliance launched a renewed combined attack the following year, and after five years of fierce fighting Nineveh was sacked in late 612 BC after a prolonged siege, in which Sinsharishkin was killed defending his capital. House-to-house -house fighting continued in Nineveh, and an Assyrian general and member of the royal household, took the throne as Ashur Ubalat II. He was offered the chance of accepting a position of vassalage by the leaders of the alliance according to the Babylonian Chronicle. However he refused and managed to successfully fight his way out of Nineveh and to the northern Assyrian city of Haran in Upper Mesopotamia where he founded a new capital. The fighting continued, as the Assyrian king held out against the alliance until 607 BC when he was eventually ejected by the Medes, Babylonians, Scythians, and their allies, and prevented in an attempt to regain the city the same year. The Egyptian pharaoh Necho II, whose dynasty had been installed as vassals of Assyria in 671 BC, belatedly tried to aid Egypt's former Assyrian masters, 
possibly out of fear that Egypt would be next to succumb to the new powers without Assyria to protect them, having already been ravaged by the Scythians. The Assyrians fought on with Egyptian aid until what was probably a final decisive victory was achieved against them at Karchemish in northwestern Assyria in 605 BC. The seat of empire was thus transferred to Babylonia for the first time since Hammurabi over a thousand years before. Nabopolassar was followed by his son Nebuchadnezzar II whose reign of 43 years made Babylon once more the ruler of much of the civilized world, taking over portions of the former Assyrian Empire, with the eastern and northeastern portion being taken by the Medes and the far north by the Scythians. Nebuchadnezzar too may have also had to contend with remnants of the Assyrian resistance. Some sections of the Assyrian army and administration may have still continued in and around Durkatlimu in northwest Assyria for a time, however by 599 BC Assyrian imperial records from this region also fell silent. The fate of Ashur Ubalat II remains unknown, and he may have been killed attempting to regain Haran, at Karchemish, or continued to fight on eventually disappearing into obscurity. The Scythians and Sumerians, erstwhile allies of Babylonia under Nabopolassar, now became a threat, and Nebuchadnezzar too was forced to march into Anatolia and rout their forces, ending the northern threat to his empire. The Egyptians attempted to remain in the Near East possibly in an effort to aid in restoring Assyria as a secure buffer against Babylonia and the Medes and Persians, or to carve out an empire of their own. Nebuchadnezzar II campaigned against the Egyptians and drove them back over the Sinai. However an attempt to take Egypt itself as his Assyrian predecessors had succeeded in doing failed mainly due to a series of rebellions from the Israelites of Judah and the former kingdom of Ephraim, the Phoenicians of Canaan and the Arameans of the Levant. The Babylonian king crushed these rebellions, deposed Jehoiakim, the king of Judah and deported a sizable part of the population to Babylonia. Cities like Tyre, Sidon and Damascus were also subjugated. The Arabs and other South Arabian peoples who dwelt in the deserts to the south of the borders of Mesopotamia were then also subjugated. In 567 BC he went to war with Pharaoh Amasis, and briefly invaded Egypt itself. After securing his empire, which included marrying a Median princess, he devoted himself to maintaining the empire and conducting numerous impressive building projects in Babylon. He is credited with building the fabled Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Amel Marduk succeeded to the throne and reigned for only two years. Little contemporary record of his rule survives, though Berisus later stated that he was deposed and murdered in 560 BC by his successor Nariglasar for conducting himself in an improper manner. Nariglasar also had a short reign. He was the son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar II, and it is unclear if he was a Chaldean or native Babylonian who married into the dynasty. He campaigned in Aram and Phoenicia successfully maintaining Babylonian rule in these regions. Nariglasar died young however, and was succeeded by his son Labashimarduk, who was still a boy. He was deposed and killed during the same year in a palace conspiracy. Of the reign of the last Babylonian king, Nabonidus who is the son of the Assyrian priestess Adaguppi and who managed to kill the last Chaldean king, Labashi Marduk, and took the reign, there is a fair amount of information available. Nabonidus was, at least from the mother's side, neither Chaldean nor Babylonian, but ironically Assyrian, hailing from its final capital of Haran. His father's origins remain unknown. 
Information regarding Nabonidus is chiefly derived from a chronological tablet containing the annals of Nabonidus, supplemented by another inscription of Nabonidus where he recounts his restoration of the Temple of the Moon God Sin at Haran, as well as by a proclamation of Cyrus issued shortly after his formal recognition as King of Babylonia. A number of factors arose which would ultimately lead to the fall of Babylon. The population of Babylonia became restive and increasingly disaffected under Nabonidus. He excited a strong feeling against himself by attempting to centralize the polytheistic religion of Babylonia in the Temple of Marduk at Babylon, and while he had thus alienated the local priesthoods, the military party also despised him on account of his antiquarian tastes. He seemed to have left the defense of his kingdom to his son Belshazzar, occupying himself with the more congenial work of excavating the foundation records of the temples and determining the dates of their builders. He also spent time outside Babylonia, rebuilding temples in the Assyrian city of Haran, and also among his Arab subjects in the deserts to the south of Mesopotamia. Nabonidus and Belshazzar's Assyrian heritage is also likely to have added to this resentment. In addition, Mesopotamian military might had usually been concentrated in the martial state of Assyria. Babylonia had always been more vulnerable to conquest and invasion than its northern neighbor, and without the might of Assyria to keep foreign powers in check and Mesopotamia dominant, Babylonia was ultimately exposed. It was in the sixth year of Nabonidus that Cyrus the Great, the Achaemenid Persian king of Anchan in Elam, revolted against his suzerain Astyages, king of the Manda or Medes, at Ekbatna. Astyages' army betrayed him to his enemy, and Cyrus established himself at Ekbatna, thus putting an end to the empire of the Medes and making the Persian faction dominant among the Iranic peoples. Three years later Cyrus had become king of all Persia, and was engaged in a campaign to put down a revolt among the Assyrians. Meanwhile, Nabonidus had established a camp in the desert of his colony of Arabia, near the southern frontier of his kingdom, leaving his son Belshazzar in command of the army. In 539 BC Cyrus invaded Babylonia. A battle was fought at Api in the month of June, where the Babylonians were defeated, and immediately afterwards Sippar surrendered to the invader. Nabonidus fled to Babylon, where he was pursued by Gabriaz, and on the sixteenth day of Tammuz, two days after the capture of Sippar, the soldiers of Cyrus entered Babylon without fighting. Nabonidus was dragged from his hiding place where the services continued without interruption. Cyrus did not arrive until the 3rd of Marquesvan, Gabriaz having acted for him in his absence. Gabriaz was now made governor of the province of Babylon, and a few days afterwards Belshazzar the son of Nabonidus died in battle. A public mourning followed, lasting six days, and Cyrus' son Cambyses accompanied the corpse to the tomb. One of the first acts of Cyrus accordingly was to allow the Jewish exiles to return to their own homes, carrying with them their sacred temple vessels. The permission to do so was embodied in a proclamation, whereby the conqueror endeavored to justify his claim to the Babylonian throne. Cyrus now claimed to be the legitimate successor of the ancient Babylonian kings and the avenger of Belmarduk, who was assumed to be wrathful at the impiety of Nabonidus in removing the images of the local gods from their ancestral shrines to his capital Babylon. The Chaldean tribe had lost control of Babylonia decades before the end of the era that sometimes bears their name and they appear to have blended into the general populace of Babylonia even before this, and during the Persian Achaemenid Empire the term Chaldean ceased to refer to a race of people, 
and instead specifically to a social class of priests educated in classical Babylonian literature, particularly astronomy and astrology. By the mid-Seleucid Empire period this term too had fallen from use. Babylonia was absorbed into the Achaemenid Empire in 539 BC. A year before Cyrus' death, in 529 BC, he elevated his son Cambyses II in the government, making him king of Babylon, while he reserved for himself the fuller title of king of the provinces of the empire. It was only when Darius I acquired the Persian throne and ruled it as a representative of the Zoroastrian religion, that the old tradition was broken and the claim of Babylon to confer legitimacy on the rulers of Western Asia ceased to be acknowledged. Immediately after Darius seized Persia, Babylonia briefly recovered its independence under a native ruler, Nadin Tabel, who took the name of Nebuchadnezzar III, and reigned from October 522 BC to August 520 BC, when Darius took the city by storm. During this period Assyria to the north also rebelled. A few years later, Probably 514 BC, Babylon again revolted under the Armenian king Nebuchadnezzar IV, on this occasion, after its capture by the Persians, the walls were partly destroyed. The e Sajala, the great temple of Bel, however, still continued to be kept in repair and to be a center of Babylonian religious feelings. Alexander the Great conquered Babylon in 333 BC for the Greeks, and died there in 323 BC. Babylonia and Assyria then became part of the Greek Seleucid Empire. It has long been maintained that the foundation of Seleucia diverted the population to the new capital of southern Mesopotamia, and that the ruins of the old city became a quarry for the builders of the new seat of government, but the recent publication of the Babylonian Chronicles has shown that urban life was still very much the same well into the Parthian Empire. The Parthian king Mithridates conquered the region into the Parthian Empire in 150 BC, and the region became something of a battleground between Greeks and Parthians. There was a brief interlude of Roman conquest under Trajan, after which the Parthians reasserted control. The satrapy of Babylonia was absorbed into Asa. Rista and in the Sasanian Empire, which began in 226 AD, and by this time East Syrian Rite Syriac Christianity had become the dominant religion among the native Assyrian, Babylonian populace who had never adopted the Zoroastrianism or Hellenic religions and languages of their rulers. Apart from the small 2nd century BC to 3rd century AD independent Neo-Assyrian states of Adiabani, Osren, Assur, Beth Garme, Beth Nuhadra and Hatra in the north, Mesopotamia remained under largely Persian control until the Arab Muslim conquest of Persia in the 7th century AD. ASA. Rista N was dissolved as a geopolitical entity in 637 AD, and the native Eastern Aramaic speaking and largely Christian populace of southern and central Mesopotamia gradually underwent Arabization and Islamization in contrast to northern Mesopotamia, where an Assyrian continuity endures to the present day. Bronze Age to Early Iron Age Mesopotamian culture is sometimes summarized as a Syro Babylonian, because of the close ethnic, linguistic, and cultural interdependence of the two political centers. The term Babylonia, especially in writings from around the early 20th century, was formerly used to also include southern Mesopotamia's earliest pre Babylonian history and not only in reference to the later city-state of Babylon proper. This geographic usage of the name Babylonia has generally been replaced by the more accurate term Sumer or Sumero-Akkadian in more recent writing, referring to the pre-Assyro-Babylonian Mesopotamian civilization. 
In Babylonia, an abundance of clay, and lack of stone, led to greater use of mud brick. Babylonian, Sumerian and Assyrian temples were massive structures of crude brick which were supported by buttresses, the rain being carried off by drains. One such drain at Ur was made of lead. The use of brick led to the early development of the pilaster and column, and of frescoes and enameled tiles. The walls were brilliantly colored, and sometimes plated with zinc or gold, as well as with tiles. Painted terracotta cones for torches were also embedded in the plaster. In Babylonia, in place of the relief, there was greater use of three-dimensional figure saw euro the earliest examples being the statues of Gudia, that are realistic if somewhat clumsy. The paucity of stone in Babylonia made every pebble precious, and led to a high perfection in the art of gem cutting. Tablets dating back to the old Babylonian period document the application of mathematics to the variation in the length of daylight over a solar year. Centuries of Babylonian observations of celestial phenomena are recorded in the series of cuneiform script tablets known as the Ena Ma Anu Enlil. The oldest significant astronomical text that we possess is Tablet 63 of Ena Ma Anu Enlil, the Venus Tablet of Ami Sajika, which lists the first and last visible risings of Venus over a period of about 21 years and is the earliest evidence that the phenomena of a planet were recognized as periodic. The oldest rectangular astrolabe dates back to Babylonia c. 1100 BC. The mole.apin, contains catalogues of stars and constellations as well as schemes for predicting heliacal risings and the settings of the planets, lengths of daylight measured by a water clock, gnomon, shadows, and intercalations. The Babylonian Gu text arranges stars in strings that lie along declination circles and thus measure right ascensions or time intervals, and also employs the stars of the zenith, which are also separated by given right ascensional differences. Medical Diagnosis and Prognosis We find in a whole constellation of disciplines. There was a real common ground among these forms of knowledge, an approach involving analysis of particular cases, constructed only through traces, symptoms, hints. In short, we can speak about a symptomatic or divinatory paradigm which could be oriented toward past, present or future, depending on the form of knowledge called upon. Toward future, that was the medical science of symptoms, with its double character, diagnostic, explaining past and present, and prognostic, suggesting likely future. The oldest Babylonian texts on medicine date back to the first Babylonian dynasty in the first half of the second millennium BC although the earliest medical prescriptions appear in Sumerian during the third dynasty of Ur period. The most extensive Babylonian medical text, however, is the diagnostic handbook written by the Amasentene, or chief scholar, E. Sajal Kinapli of Borsippa during the reign of the Babylonian king Adadapla Along with contemporary ancient Egyptian medicine, the Babylonians introduced the concepts of diagnosis, prognosis, physical examination, and prescriptions. In addition, the diagnostic handbook introduced the methods of therapy and etiology and the use of empiricism, logic, and rationality in diagnosis prognosis and therapy. The text contains a list of medical symptoms and often detailed empirical observations along with logical rules used in combining observed symptoms on the body of a patient with its diagnosis and prognosis. The symptoms and diseases of a patient were treated through therapeutic means such as bandages, creams, and pills. If a patient could not be cured physically, the Babylonian physicians often relied on exorcism to cleanse the patient from any curses. 
E. Sajal Kinapli's diagnostic handbook was based on a logical set of axioms and assumptions, including the modern view that through the examination and inspection of the symptoms of a patient, it is possible to determine the patient's disease, its etiology and future development, and the chances of the patient's recovery. E. Sajal Kinapli discovered a variety of illnesses and diseases and described their symptoms in his diagnostic handbook. These include the symptoms for many varieties of epilepsy and related ailments along with their diagnosis and prognosis. Later Babylonian medicine resembles early Greek medicine in many ways. In particular, the early treatises of the Hippocratic Corpus show the influence of late Babylonian medicine in terms of both content and form. There were libraries in most towns and temples, an old Sumerian proverb averred that he who would excel in the school of the scribes must rise with the dawn. Women as well as men learned to read and write, and in Semitic times, this involved knowledge of the extinct Sumerian language and a complicated and extensive syllabary. A considerable amount of Babylonian literature was translated from Sumerian originals, and the language of religion and law long continued to be written in the old agglutinative language of Sumer. Vocabularies, grammars, and interlinear translations were compiled for the use of students as well as commentaries on the older texts and explanations of obscure words and phrases. The characters of the syllabary were all arranged and named, and elaborate lists of them were drawn up. There are many Babylonian literary works whose titles have come down to us. One of the most famous of these was the Epic of Gilgamesh, in twelve books, translated from the original Sumerian by a certain Sinliki Yunani, and arranged upon an astronomical principle. Each division contains the story of a single adventure in the career of Gilgamesh. The whole story is a composite product, and it is probable that some of the stories are artificially attached to the central figure. The brief resurgence of Babylonian culture in the 7th to 6th centuries BC was accompanied by a number of important cultural developments. Among the sciences, astronomy and astrology still occupied a conspicuous place in Babylonian society. Astronomy was of old standing in Babylonia. The zodiac was a Babylonian invention of great antiquity and eclipses of the sun and moon could be foretold. There are dozens of cuneiform records of original Mesopotamian eclipse observations. Babylonian astronomy was the basis for much of what was done in ancient Greek astronomy, in classical Indian astronomy, in Sasanian, Byzantine and Syrian astronomy, astronomy in the medieval Islamic world and in Central Asian and Western European astronomy. Neo-Babylonian astronomy can thus be considered the direct predecessor of much of ancient Greek mathematics and astronomy, which in turn is the historical predecessor of the European scientific revolution. During the 8th and 7th centuries BC, Babylonian astronomers developed a new approach to astronomy. They began studying philosophy dealing with the ideal nature of the early universe and began employing an internal logic within their predictive planetary systems. This was an important contribution to astronomy and the philosophy of science and some scholars have thus referred to this new approach as the first scientific revolution. This new approach to astronomy was adopted and further developed in Greek and Hellenistic astronomy. In Seleucid and Parthian times, the astronomical reports were of a thoroughly scientific character, how much earlier their advanced knowledge and methods were developed is uncertain. The Babylonian development of methods for predicting the motions of the planets is considered to be a major episode in the history of astronomy. The only Babylonian astronomer known to have supported a heliocentric model of planetary motion was Seleucus of Seleucia. 
Seleucus is known from the writings of Plutarch. He supported the heliocentric theory where the Earth rotated around its own axis which in turn revolved around the Sunday. According to Plutarch, Seleucus even proved the heliocentric system, but it is not known what arguments he used. Babylonian mathematical texts are plentiful and well edited. In respect of time they fall in two distinct groups, one from the first Babylonian dynasty period, the other mainly Seleucid from the last three or four centuries BC. In respect of content there is scarcely any difference between the two groups of texts. Thus Babylonian mathematics remain stale in character and content, with very little progress or innovation, for nearly two millennia. The Babylonian system of mathematics was sexagesimal, or a base 60 numeral system. From this we derive the modern day usage of 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes in an hour, and 360 degrees in a circle. The Babylonians were able to make great advances in mathematics for two reasons. First, the number 60 has many divisors, making calculations easier. Additionally, unlike the Egyptians and Romans, the Babylonians had a true place value system, where digits written in the left column represented larger values. Among the Babylonians' mathematical accomplishments were the determination of the square root of two correctly to seven places. They also demonstrated knowledge of the Pythagorean theorem well before Pythagoras, as evidenced by this tablet translated by Dennis Ramsey and dating to C. 1900 BC. 4 is the length and 5 is the diagonal. What is the breadth? Its size is not known. 4 times 4 is 16. And 5 times 5 is 25. You take 16 from 25 and there remains 9. What times what shall I take in order to get 9? 3 times 3 is 9. 3 is the breadth. The Na of 600 and the Sar of 3600 were formed from the unit of 60, corresponding with a degree of the equator. Tablets of squares and cubes, calculated from 1 to 60, have been found at Sankara, and a people acquainted with the sundial, the clepsydra, the lever and the pulley, must have had no mean knowledge of mechanics. A crystal lens turned on the lathe, was discovered by Austin Henry Layard at Nimrud along with glass vases bearing the name of Sargon, this could explain the excessive minuteness of some of the writing on the Assyrian tablets, and a lens may also have been used in the observation of the heavens. The Babylonians might have been familiar with the general rules for measuring the areas. They measured the circumference of a circle as three times the diameter and the area as one twelfth the square of the circumference, which would be correct if I euro were estimated as three. The volume of a cylinder was taken as the product of the base and the height, however, the volume of the frustum of a cone or a square pyramid was incorrectly taken as the product of the height and half the sum of the bases. Also. There was a recent discovery in which a tablet used I euro as three and one eighth. The Babylonians are also known for the Babylonian mile, which was a measure of distance equal to about 11 kilometers today. This measurement for distances eventually was converted to a time mile used for measuring the travel of the sun, therefore, representing time. The Babylonians used also space-time graphs to calculate the velocity of Jupiter. This is an idea that is considered highly modern, traced to the 14th century England and France and anticipating integral calculus. The origins of Babylonian philosophy can be traced back to early Mesopotamian wisdom literature, which embodied certain philosophies of life, particularly ethics 
in the forms of dialectic, dialogues, epic poetry, folklore, hymns, lyrics, prose, and proverbs. Babylonian reasoning and rationality developed beyond empirical observation. It is possible that Babylonian philosophy had an influence on Greek philosophy, particularly Hellenistic philosophy. The Babylonian text Dialogue of Pessimism contains similarities to the agonistic thought of the Sophists, the Heraclitan doctrine of contrasts, and the Dialogues of Plato, as well as a precursor to the Maeutic Socratic method of Socrates. The Milesian philosopher Thales is also known to have studied philosophy in Mesopotamia. Babylonia, and particularly its capital city Babylon, has long held a place in the Abrahamic religions as a symbol of excess and dissolute power. Many references are made to Babylon in the Bible, both literally and allegorically. The mentions in the Tanakh tend to be historical or prophetic while New Testament apocalyptic references to the Whore of Babylon are more likely figurative, or cryptic references possibly to pagan Rome, or some other archetype. The legendary Hanging Gardens of Babylon and the Tower of Babel are seen as symbols of luxurious and arrogant power respectively. Early Christians sometimes referred to Rome as Babylon, the Apostle Peter ends his first letter with this advice. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. Revelation 14 8 says, A second angel followed and said, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Other examples can be found in 1619 and 18:2. Babylon is referred to in Quran in verse of chapter Surah Baqarah, and they followed what the devils had recited during the reign of Solomon. It was not Solomon who disbelieved, but the devils disbelieved, teaching people magic and that which was revealed to the two angels at Babylon, Harut and Merut. But the two angels do not teach anyone unless they say, We are a trial, so do not disbelieve. And they learn from them that by which they cause separation between a man and his wife. But they do not harm anyone through it except by permission of Allah. And the people learn what harms them and does not benefit them. But the children of Israel certainly knew that whoever purchased the magic would not have in the hereafter any share. And wretched is that for which they sold themselves, if they only knew.